Okay, I'm back. That's my great intro, if you remember. I did a video last night. It was really lackluster. I was uh, uh, a little tired. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, also, I may have people listening in the other room, and that always makes me talk a little less quiet because, God forbid, somebody hears my voice when I'm making a YouTube video. Um, okay, I've been getting a lot of questions about my buffs, um, not just from more from multiple places. Let's put it that way. Um, I did the video yesterday, and there were a couple of holy craps. Where are you getting your buffs from? So, you all know my wall general. Um, I don't know that I'm getting a lot of buffs from here. Where I'm getting my buffs are from the the the. Oh, I can't look at them from there. Um, so where you're getting your gear, I have four pieces of civilization, civil, civilization gear. And the other two that you don't recognize are just Parthenian. So um, a lot of people are tricked by that. They look like something special. That's just Ecumenity gear upgraded. Um, so, I mean, I'm getting some siege attack. I like my siege attack, so I've always kind of focused on that a little bit because I know siege really kills. It shoots over the other troops, and unless somebody's attacking me with siege, siege is phenomenal. Unfortunately, I can't have a lot of siege because they die so easily during a siege bomb. So I always keep my siege down to, to, to lower levels. Um, I can try to remember to let you guys see my actual siege troop count. Um, they're in my reports and they're in my videos, so you can take a look at that. But I'm just going to thumb through here. You've just seen some average siege and range attack. Um, just these two pieces had siege. Um, mounted troop attack, which, you know, I want attack. So, again, I've said this before, but your wall general isn't designed to debuff. It's designed to kill the incoming march. If you get debuff, that's great. It, it adds, but your subsidies are where you get your debuffs from. Your subsidy generals a little bit, but mostly the gear. So when you're building your wall general, it's so easy to start thinking, oh, I want debuff. I want this civ gear for debuff, debuff, debuff. No, you want your wall general to power your troops to kill their march. You know, there's more than one way to stop it. You can debuff it or you can just kill it. And that's what you want your wall general to do. So going back into the gear, a mounted troop attack, that really doesn't help me all that much. Um, this piece is the opposite of what I said. It's mostly debuffing. Um, I don't have a lot of mounted troops to buff. Um, obviously, I got that T1 tier, but percentage attack on that T1 layer is worthless. Um, here's some more siege attack and in-city attack. So I'm getting... 51% of my siege right there and I'm getting the attack range. I mean hopefully you all know you want a bracer or ring that has siege machine attack range because now you're killing from further back. So less things can attack you while you're attacking them. Um, but then you also notice I get the set bonuses on, on three different sets. So I'm getting the in-city mounted troop defense and HP um, from that set bonus. Which one is that? The choreo. Then on this Augusta, I am getting the enemy troop attack. And then from the Parthenian, I'm getting some more troop attack there. So there's some extra attack. Now this piece of gear we haven't looked at yet. Um, range and siege machine HP, which is cool. But uh, the siege machine attack, 32% there. I'm also getting great march speed, which does nothing on your wall general. Um, okay, so I do have the specialties done. So I'm getting Siege HP and Defense. Hospital Capacity, which I enjoy. Not everybody does. Uh, I need Hospital Capacity because I, I will use my Source of Life till they're gone in SPS. So I want to prolong those as much. I have no problem using resources and speeds. I would rather heal with Hospital than soul, Source of Life. Um, here's some more Siege Machine Attack along with deep, Defense and HP. Nothing too crazy hospital, hospital capacity let's take a look at the assistant oh did you want to see the dragon the dragon i'm getting the mounted troop hp and one of them is attacked they're all gold level 
I don't really know if I want HP over attack. Do I want that layer to survive? I think there's enough attack there already because of the amount of numbers. But the quicker the enemy dies, the better, right? So attack on a T1 layer should help. HP should also help because if they don't get through that layer, my layer is going to hold them there for my siege and range to destroy them. All right, so that's my uh, my main wall general. We're going to look at the assistant. I don't know how they classify which general rises to the top when you're scrolling through here. Um, I guess these guys are assigned, so they stay at the top for some great reason. But why would Barbosa, level 33, does he even have gear? No gear, no dragon be at the top of my list. I feel like it should prioritize power. So my wall general should be way higher than my assistant wall general who has no gear, but let's take a look at him, rant over. Um, skill book, increase in city, troop attack by 10%, and siege by another 35. So I'm getting 45% siege attack from this guy's skill book. Um, do I need to show you guys skill books? Obviously I have my, my siege attack, range attack, and then I have mounted troop speed. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> uh, I've heard people tell me that ground speed attack is bad because you want your mounted troops to get there first. But I don't know that I've seen any reports. And if you listen to Derek Defy, uh, he's got some pretty good battle um, mechanic videos out there. He has done tons of testing with mounted troop speed, and he says he gets zero difference on the wall general having mounted troop speed. I still have the book on my guy, so you guys, you guys do what you want. Specialties, we are getting siege machine attack and HP. Trap triggering, which I still don't know if traps do squat. Siege machine attack, another 10%. Another 10% attack along with HP and defense. And in-city range troop and siege machine attack, 30% along with some defense. And then my specialty is the orb from the um, SVS chest that you all should be getting at 540 million point level. Um, that's oh, all troop attack. I was thinking it was mounted troop attack. That's a pretty damn good specialty. Um, it does have some debuff in there too. Mine is not done. Um, even though it's yellow, I still have six more levels I could take it. Um, it takes actual orbs, or uh, I'm sorry, runes. So it looks like I could do one more level right now. Um, and what would it give me? A half percent all troops attack. So really 2% attack if you add the four categories together not much i don't think i'm gonna do that today um because you can see i don't have many orbs and i'd actually like to get one of my sub city general specialties maxed um not sure if anybody's doing that but i do my sub city stuff before i do my attack generals because i am defense um most people are not as obsessed as i am so this is my uh Assistant, Do I need to show you my skill books I have on my main? I have mounted troop attack. Not really sure how much that does because I usually don't have a lot of mounted troops. Um, but I also have the range troop range bonus. It should be archer troop range bonus so that my archers shoot from further back. Um, and then siege machine range bonus. So my siege is 200 units further back again. Um, so that's just the wall general. Uh, again, the refines on these gear are what's given me most of my defense. Of course, you know by now to use flat numbers. Even when you get that 29% mounted troop attack, throw it away. It's garbage. It's not what you want. You want flat refines. Okay, so... My duty officers, if you haven't seen my duty officers, I'm pretty obsessed. I have one, two, three, four, five fully ascended. I could do Oleg, this trial of knights, 
all his fifth star gives me is 10% mounted troop attack, defense, and HP. That's okay, but I'm going to spend 1,250 uh, blood of heirs to get that stat. And I don't have a lot of mounted troops on my defense. So this would be great for killing monsters um, and stuff like that, or when I'm attacking with mounted troops. So um, I don't want to get off on, on too much of a tangent here. But again, um, John Wick on YouTube is really good. He taught me that qualified stats means everything. And this is a non-qualified stat, which is better than a qualified stat. Um, qualified stats would be like marching or when reinforcing or in rally, which would be even worse for blazons. Um, so this fifth star here, or the 10th star, if you want to call it that, the fifth red star, the mounted troop attack, defense, and HP is non-qualified. That means that stat applies anywhere I'm playing. So this would help me kill monsters, which is cool, but not my main thing. So um, a number of duty officers, it is qualified. Like, let's say if I ascended Guan Ra Rule, if you look at his fifth or tenth star, that's a bad example. That gives me all-time siege machine attack. So that's actually pretty good. Um, there's one that does not. Maybe I already completed them. Sometimes they're in-city. This one is all-time ground. Sika is in-city. Tr ground troop, mounted troop, defense, and HP. So that's just in-city on his 10th star. Um, but I still like it. Those are good numbers. I'll take it. Um, but some of them are qualified, some of them are not. So you don't want to look at that. And it's also something to consider when you're trying to depend, decide on um, which attacking PvP generals you want. I don't abide by that. A lot of my um, attacking generals are qualified. So uh, if you take a look at Simeon, um, generals leading the army to attack. That's actually non-qualified. Oh, yeah, it is. To attack. It should, if it would say when generals leading the army... That would mean that I can use this this general to reinforce somebody or to hold a temple. But all those stats that say when a general is leading to attack, that those stats are out the window when you're not actually marching. So all my all mine are, except for Edward Teach, um, I decided to use him for siege because he is non-qualified. So he does it whenever he's leading the army. So this guy is an ideal general to build forever because his stats will work anywhere. And that's something that John Wick taught me. So if you haven't looked at his videos, uh, I think he's just, uh, I put in one of my previous videos, how to find him. Just search, uh, Ebony King's return, John Wick, it would show up, but he actually, I think it's like JW is something is the name of his channel, but, uh, I don't think he's too hard to find. Um, so, looking at the duty officers, I know I go off on these tangents and you guys encourage that. So, um, do we just want to go through and see how much siege stuff I'm getting from these guys? I Most of the, the D, duty generals I do, I actually prefer ground and mounted because it's always defense and HP. And those are my layers that are smashing together while siege and range aren't even getting attacked they're picking away at the, the levels they can reach with their distance. So I like, I prefer duty officers with mounted and ground defense and HP. Um, but let's go ahead and look through them and see if I'm getting some siege bonuses that I don't, that I'm not aware of. Uh, hospital capacity, and then we're, I'm just going to move down to stars and just try to, try to go over them quickly. In-city range troop, siege machine, defense and HP. That is not attack. Hospital capacity, healing capacity. Now we get down to the fourth red star, or the ninth star, depending on who you are and how you call it. In-city range troop siege machine attack, 10% for both siege and range. And if you notice, my siege buffs were way above my range, like three, 400 points. So we're really, if we're really trying to find out how I got 1,700 siege attack at home, um, we're almost looking for just siege, siege buffs, but... 
this will show where I get some of both. So, and again, the the 10th star uh, in city range troop and siege machine attack and HP. So, um, there's some advantages in spending on these duty officers, and I try to hoard blood of heirs wherever I can get them. I always make sure I send out two to three uh, 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 gathering marches on tiles level 13 to 16 because you get a couple a day I, I i should know i don't know how many you get i think it's just two a day from gathering but that's 60 a month and if you're doing all the events and you're always choosing blood of heirs there's a couple more there relics i think you get two or three a day out of relics um so i do everything i can to make sure i'm getting it i always make sure i'm getting the the chest and the events where they have the blood of heirs including the daily test i believe there's like one or two in that one um so i mean you're talking five to ten a day if you're doing everything plus you know the the the, the bigger events so let's read through this guy in city ground research in city range troops siege machine defense and hp in city ground i'm just reading down for anything that sticks out final star is in city range troop and siege machine attack there's 10 more percent um, we're not really finding out how we're getting up to 1700 yet. Um, we'll take a look at Blazons after this. I'm going to try to make this go fast and furious through here. So, uh, Archer Toter, in city range troop, defense, HP, defense, training speed, HP, in city range troop, and siege machine attack 20% for the fourth star. And then the fifth star is just range troop, all time non qualified range troop, HPN defense attack, all that good stuff. That was uh, Juan of Portugal. Then uh, the trap officer, and these guys are available in your general or in your tavern. I just went through, spent 500,000 gems, just it's actually kind of fun. Just even while you're driving, don't look at your phone and hit the uh the spin button on your tavern and then look down and see who's there you know when you get to a stoplight um whatever it takes i've also set up an auto program on on uh uh um blue stacks you can just set a program where you it'll copy whatever mouse clicks you just did i will go into tavern and i'll just click on you know the spin button or the search button and then i'll i'll play video games or whatever and then look back at my computer and see who it stopped on um you, you know nine times out of ten it's somebody you don't want and you just hit you know cancel and then it keeps clicking on until you get to the next general you look back and there's a an epic general that you can decide if you want or not i would not take too many out of there obviously you need one of certain people for the art hall you know so you always want to know who you're looking for there um but all right i'm off again on another tangent there's a little tip in city ground mounted in, uh i'm just rifling down damage siege capacity who cares about that in city ground and mounted troop in city ground and mounted troop in city ground and mounted troop the last one in city siege machine attack 15 percent. there you go there's some more there um now we're gonna look at abdallah rahman i don't know how to say his name in city ground troop, mounted troop, in city ground troop, in city ground troop, in city ground troop, in city ground troop. Okay. There's no siege there, but these are buffs that I wanted. Um, but the point of this video is trying to find out where my, m mostly my siege attack is coming from. In city ground, in city ground, in city ground. And if I do the final one, we talked about that, that's all mounted. So this guy's new for me. This Toyota, he's not new for me. I've had him forever. And I've been collecting his uh, fragments. So I have, uh, you need 450 to fully ascend a guy. I have 480, as you can see there. Um, you need 480 if you have to craft the general. You know what I mean? I think you need 16 copies if you count the original general. I already have the general. So I need 15 more copies or 45, 450 fragments. Um... 5,000 blood of heirs. I just got lucky and won 400 this morning. So I'm ready for this event. Um, and I already started on other other stuff. So anywho, 
this guy is new that I can actually use him now because I'm K35. I can use my rally spot officer. That's when that slot opens up. If you look through his stats, I wrote them down here. Um, if you fully ascend him, you will get 240% buffs to your troops. Um, most of that, I'm looking at my chart. You might be reading the actual general on my screen. Most of that is... It's all troop. Okay, so that's great. I mean, that's 240% to spread out over all troops. Um, looking at the attack, it just looks like 100% of that is attack, which isn't bad, right? Out of 240%, 100% of it is attack. Is that right? In-city troop attack, 10% times 4 troops is 40. And then the one above that, so it's 60% attack. Bad math. Yes, 15% attack. 60% uh, total in-city attack out of that 240. Um, but that would cost me almost all my blood of errors to fully ascend this guy. So I started, what I did is I actually broke it down on the levels. Like the first level, if I one star or six stars, one red star this guy, I'm getting 60% for 620 blood of errors. I'm definitely going to do that before SVS starts. The second one is not that exciting. You only get like 20% buffs, but you do get a 20% march speed with it. So that's that's uh, encouraging. Hopefully you guys understand. Like When I'm reading a number two star, it says 5% troop defense. I count that as 20% because I have four different troop types. So that that's where I come up with 20% on, on the second red star. Um, looking at the third one, you get 15% HP, which is cool. I like that it's non, not, I don't want to say not qualified, because that's the term we use somewhere else, non-troop specific. So all my troops get that HP. So that means that I'm very flexible in that, that stat I'm adding. I don't want to be a, a one-trick pony where I can defend against uh, range troop attacks, but I get smoked with ground. So um, I do enjoy adding to all categories. Uh, moving down to the fourth star... You only get 40%, but some of that is attack. So that's, you know, 20 and 20. Um, but you're getting pretty expensive. So um, I will be ascending this guy. I haven't decided how far yet, but I'm excited to do it. Uh, Guan Ru, I am getting just defense and HP for my range. If I finished him out, I would get another 10% siege machine attack on that last one. But uh, I haven't decided how far I will go with that. I did write this guy down too. So if I do the next star, I'd get 30% and then 30% on the third red star. And then when you get down to that fourth star, you're getting 80%. I mean, that's pretty sexy. Um, but it's going to cost me like 3,000 blood of errors um, to take it to that fourth star. But it's pretty exciting to get that many stats 80 percent out of one one leveling up of the star so eventually i'm going to do it and i'd rather have these general generals than the premium ones like ahsoka is a good officer i can't ascend him or her whichever one gender she is it is um i was told as a chick with a mustache does that make any sense i'm pretty sure that's a dude um Anywho, um, I can't ascend this guy, and to in he's got good base stats. I'm tempted to just do Menshikov, but Menshikov has some pretty crappy stats too. You know, for for what you would have to stick into Menshikov. I mean, you're getting general defense, which is cool. Um, you don't get anything from the first star as far as um, the first skill book. Then when you get into one red star, you get some defense for everybody, some HP for everybody, nothing for the third star except construction speed. Um, enemy troop attack, you know, I mean, it's okay. But definitely low priority. Ban Chow versus uh, the guy above him, the Maurice. I'm, 
I will be ascending Van Chow. Maurice is really good in the fact that he reduces enemy range troop attack. I don't have problems with range attack often. Um, and an in-city range troop and siege machine attack, that's nice to get that 40% buff there. Moving over to Ban Chow, um, he reduces mounted troop attack and then increases just your range troop attack by 20%. So you're losing some siege attack if I went to this guy, but then I could ascend him. I have enough to fully ascend this guy. And guess what? I wrote down his stats. So the first level you would be getting 60% uh, buffs to your siege and range. And then on the next level, you would get 30% to your defense, but you would get 20% archer tower attack. I don't know if archer attack is great or not. Archer tower attack. Uh, I know it targets the mounted troops, but I don't know how much it does. And it's like a troop layer. And I don't think it's a good troop layer because I will get soloed and win big time. And my archer tower is needs to heal it's like well what good is that so if you hit me twice my archer tower is not even in play unless i like pay to heal it so i really don't don't fully understand the archer tower the archer tower is just like another troop that targets mounted troop so maybe if you attack me with ground my archer tower would get decimated but if you hit me with mounted or range my archer tower wouldn't get hurt i haven't paid that much attention to it i just know that when i come into my in city my archer tower is suffering after certain solos that I won out, you know, outstandingly, and they still did a lot of damage to where I, my archer tower isn't going to be ready to be used and if they soloed immediately after. So maybe you guys know more about that, and it would be great if you posted it in the comments. You, anytime you watch a YouTube video, read the comments, because if somebody like me makes a mistake, the comments will tell you, like, uh, I do that especially when investing. If somebody says, oh, this crypto's great, and you read the comments, you actually hear some of the true story, and you can do some investigating to see what really is happening. So, likewise with me, I've, I've told you guys I'm an idiot. You're taking advice from an idiot. Do your own research. Uh, don't just go off of me. Go off of everybody combined in a, in a blender. So, uh, I don't know. Do we need to keep going on this guy? Uh, the fourth red star, you do get another 80% bump and another 80% bump of, of buffs in the fifth star. So I will be doing Ban Chow eventually, but the video is supposed to be where am I getting my buffs. So let's go look at the Blazons. There's two different ways to go to the Blazons. You can go here and you can click on Blazons, but this is kind of a weird way to, to jump in there. I'm going to go through... I always, for whatever reason, go through my stables and then thumb to where we go. Let's start on ground. Um, I do have a section of how, or a video of how I handle upgrading my blazons, so I'm not going to try to go into that. Let's just take a look at what I'm getting. You definitely want the set bonus. If you look on the bottom, if you all have level one blazons on this guy, you're going to get that set bonus. So you might as well get the set bonus, and I want the defending one, the when defending. The only one that doesn't have a defensive one is a mounted troop. So definitely want those those set bonuses. Let's just take a look. I mean, so at some of these blazons, I mean, they help. Uh, I'm getting some stats from these blazons. Uh, these red ones are are pretty fun. This is my best blazon. I just upgraded it to level 18 yesterday. Excited to see if I got a fifth sixth stat that helps me when i get to level 20 i don't have any level 20 blazons um in fact when i make them red i usually leave them red if they have a bad new stat because they're they're pretty powerful when i get them to level 10 if they didn't get a good stat like marching troop defense i i don't i want i want defending or even just ground troop defense because that's non-qualified. I could use that anywhere. Um, marching is okay for me because I know I'll get some use out of that. I don't switch my blazons when I'm when I'm marching uh, unless I totally have a ton of time. But uh, this guy, this is worthless. On monsters. I don't need ground troop HP on monsters. So I will find another blazon. I will 
take this blaze and I'll shove it in there. It usually gets me up to level nine. And then I'll, I'll, I'll just keep going through blazings until I get the one I want. All right, let's get over to siege. I, it took me a long time to get siege blazons that actually had two stats I wanted to keep. Finally, I've got them, but I don't have the ones to improve very often. Siege machine attack, you know, so here's 12, 13%. I'm just going to go through them another 12 0.7 percent you know so there's 25 percent there's another 12 so you can kind of see these blazons do add up along with the uh humility set i do get another 10 percent attack 20 percent attack off of that set bonus and then let's look at the red blazons here i'm getting oh that's just hp so that's not giving me any attack, but it's a decent amount of HP for that one. Same thing with this one. Did I do the same? Oh, did I do the same one? They're identical. Oh, in rally siege machine HP. Are they exactly identical? Wow, what are the odds of that? You can't even see a difference when I thumb through them. Okay. Right. So those are my blazons. I'm getting a little there. Um, where else would I be getting siege? I mean, obviously research. I did take some videos and snapshots of the, some of the research I was doing just to show you how expensive it was. But um, expensive or how long it took. But, I mean, at K35, I can only do so much of this stuff. And then they shut you down. So sure, there's probably some research here where I'm getting 40% single siege machine attack. Um, to, I, I really don't know if single siege machine attack is a percentage or if I'm getting a whole number. I assume it's a percentage because it shows 40%. I don't know what the single means. Um, but I assume it's non-qualified. So, yeah, I'm getting some stuff there. Reduce enemy siege machine attack. HP. Defense. Here's another 40%. So there's 80% siege. But I'm getting that on all four troop types, so I'm not quite sure why my siege would be so much higher than my range. Just gonna look through here. Do you think there's something else I'm forgetting? Victory column for me was worthless. I mean, it it gave me construction speed research and increased general basics attributes by one percent. I don't know. The victory column was very uneventful for me. I thought it was gonna be nice. I thought for a long time I was gonna get to open my mil military academy at K35. I cannot. Um, so I, I would be getting a lot more buffs if I if I did go ahead and do that. I don't know where else would I be getting stats. I'm drawing a blank. I mean, not getting them from my subsidies. Hmm. I guess we're gonna leave it like that. So maybe you guys learned something just thumbing through mine, and you can see some stuff that that you're not doing that you can be doing. I think I'm gonna leave it at that for now, and. Uh, I'll catch up with you guys later.